we can now move on to tuples that are uh, data structures that are very similar to the arrays that we discussed uh, up to now. However, there are some differences. So they are uh, uh, collections, but the main, the first difference with, uh, with array is that uh, tuples are immutable. Uh, so you cannot change, uh, uh, for example, the second or the third elements. After you create them, you cannot longer change. The advantage of tuples, the main advantage is that they can efficiently host heterogeneous types like integers, floats, and so on. And why they do that? Because they can retain the, the type information of each element is stored in uh, the um, in the object itself so the, the the object is of type tuple where and t1 t2 t, t3 and so on where all of this one is the type of uh, the element that is stored so let's gonna to to see that so we have uh, for example uh, we create in this way using uh, uh, the uh, round uh, uh, parentheses and the commas. You can see here that we store the integer uh, float and, and the strings. We can also not use the parentheses, although it is more uh, common to use them just to, to, to show it. And you can see the type. The type is integer, is a tuple of, e of the object t, is a tuple integer float string integer. So for every uh, object that we store inside the tuple, this is reflected in the, in the type of the tuple object. And uh, there are some inconvenience as well. Uh, the main one is that the linear algebra doesn't apply. You cannot make uh, array operations with tuple. Tuples are not a subtype of uh, uh, abstract uh, uh, array. However, there are some other packages that behave very similar to, to tuples and uh, uh, do uh, um, and are uh, um, subtypes of uh, static arrays and the linear algebra apply. And uh, they are used the tuples uh, to uh, easily unpack multiple values. For example, when a function return multiple values, and we saw it recently here, so these functions uh, apply to the matrix A, return agent, return uh, two, um, ret uh, two separate uh, uh, output, the agent values and the agent vector. So here we can create a tuple, and with this syntax we assign the two uh, return the values of agent functions to two different variables. So to uh, index uh, the, the tuple, we do like an array, we use square, um, square brackets and uh, we can convert in, uh, if we have a vector, uh, we will, can convert a tuple to a vector with the splat operator, taking notice that we have also to add a comma. The opposite is done uh, in a similar way uh, to convert a, a tuple to a vector using the splat operator, but using uh, the typical uh, uh, note for uh, arrays, that is the square brackets, or we can use uh, list comprehension like in this example, or Again, also we can uh, use collect. So each of these uh, uh, method will convert the tuple to a vector. Similar to tuples are named tuples, but uh, as the name suggests, can be indexed with the name on top of using the position. They are created uh, similar to tuples with the round brackets uh, specifying the name for each value as uh, shown here. Attention that the name of the elements is not a string uh, as it may look, but a so-called symbol. Symbols are uh, references to the variables that we will see in the segment of metaprogramming. So if we try to use a string, 
we would end up with an error. For the rest, named tuples are very similar to tuples and in particular they are immutables and the information of the type of each stored element become part of the type of the whole uh, named tuple. Once created, a tuple element can be retrieved by both its position or its name. And uh, two specific functions that accept uh, named tuples are keys and values that return uh, respectively a tuple of the element values and uh, a tuple of the um, sorry a tuple of the elements names and a tuple of the element values. Another useful function is pairs that return an iterator to both the key and the value. It can, it can be used in a for loop like, uh, in, uh, like here. Named tuples can be converted directly from a dictionary, another data structure that we will see in a moment. So here we are. In particular, we pass to the constructor the, the dictionary. The constructor is nothing else than a function that create uh, the object of uh, uh, the type that we, we need and we will see more in details when we will discuss uh, custom types. To convert a set of uh, two uh, vectors representing the keys and the values in a number tuples, we can use a um, combination of uh, zip, loop comprehension and uh, the dictionary constructor like seen here. And put attention that we will see that in a moment the dictionary in the dictionary's order is not guaranteed. So here we are uh, lucky that uh, in a certain way that the, the order is preserved, but it, this is not guaranteed when we pass through dictionaries. And to convert from the number two tuple to uh, an array of, uh, um, of values, we can use the same methods we saw before. And attention that when we did the values, what we had was um, a tuple, still a tuple. So to convert to a vector, we need to employ one of these methods.